David Rankensmeyer. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of the Journal of Neuroengineering and Rehabilitation, and I'm a professor at the University of California at Irvine. And I'm in the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering, and also in Anatomy and Neurobiology. Yeah, so it's JNER's 15th anniversary, and it's a good time to reflect on the journal. Um, and JNER is special because it's a, a rigorous venue for publishing cutting-edge research on how technology is reshaping rehabilitation. And it's unique because it's a very cross-disciplinary journal. So we're publishing cutting-edge techniques in engineering and neuroscience, but we're also considering how that affects users, people with disabilities and the clinicians that use that technology. So we're very interested in clinical outcomes and usability and opinions about the technology. And then it's also a unique journal because it's the leading open access journal in rehabilitation. And that open access, I think, is really important for JNER because uh, it means that anyone around the world can access the latest cutting edge research on technologies to aid people with disabilities. So that could be an occupational therapist in India, or it could be a person with a disability in New Zealand. It could be uh, anyone anywhere. And I think that just creates an ecosystem that's better for innovation uh, for the whole field. It's been great to see JNR's impact factor um, increase over the years. And along with that, the number of submissions that we're getting and the quality of the submissions. It's been uh, encouraging and amazing to see that JNR now is ranked in the top, uh, so one to three, depending on the year, journals in rehabilitation. So we're, we're a specialist journal because we're looking at this impact of technology and neuroscience on rehabilitation, and yet that's, that's, we've become one of the top journals in general rehabilitation. We've had almost five million downloads of our work, and I think that's really a tribute to the open access nature of the journal. Uh, so the you know, there's literally millions of people have looked at the research in the journal. One thing I've enjoyed about being the editor-in-chief is you get to see how the field is evolving. And one way you can look at that is what, what are the most accessed papers in the journal? And our most accessed paper is um, now a classic review on wearable systems for rehabilitation. It was really the first review that systematically defined, you know, what wearable rehabilitation could be and what the main uh, problems and challenges in achieving wearable rehabilitation would be. Um, and so it's become the sort of guidepost for the field. Another way you can look at, you know, what's, what's exciting in the field is to look at what, what gets the most uh, sort of popular press. One of our papers, a study on brain uh, controlled walking. They took a, uh, found a volunteer who had had a spinal cord injury and couldn't walk, and he trained for months uh, to be able to control an avatar on a computer um, through thought alone. Um, so they'd read out the uh, electrical signals his brain was generating through uh, EEG electrodes, and he learned to be able to make this avatar s start walking and stop walking. And then what they showed is that he could take that skill and transfer it to controlling his own legs through a functional electrical stimulation system. And so it was really the first demonstration of someone directly controlling their own walking through a brain-computer interface. We're in this technological revolution for rehabilitation. Um, technologies are, are widely used, commonly used now for research and rehabilitation. We haven't seen as much uptake into clinical settings. And so I think a challenge for the field is to understand implementation and usability and uptake. Um, so I'm expecting to see more studies in that domain. Another thing is that we've seen uh, if, uh, an increase in the number of papers that are looking at wearable devices. So uh, wearable robots in the form of exoskeletons that help people walk or move their limbs or balance. And then wearable sensing uh, that, that give feedback to you uh, to coach you essentially uh, in your rehabilitation process. One thing that's been really interesting for me to see is that um, work on wearable rehabilitation has really helped develop the field of, of movement augmentation. And so this is the idea that you can augment the movement of a person who doesn't have a disability. So for example, you can put on an exoskeleton that helps you hike farther without using as much energy. We wouldn't be here without uh, the vision of Paolo Bonato, who was the founding editor-in-chief, and also all the hard work by the associate editors and, and also for the authors. Um, so I just, I'd like to thank all those people for making JNER a success. Mm -hmm.